Okay, Joel went here. More on the <coughs> songs of a true white brother. Um, we ended last time talking about this uh, particular language. Uh, the red symbol will take command of the four forces of nature for the benefit of the sun as this third crisis happens. And of course a lot of people today think that the Hopi prophecy refers to the time in which we live, which certainly is a world uh, everywhere in crisis. And uh, we did have two wars, which the Hopi leaders in 1970, Grandfather Dan seemed to think were predicted by the prophecy, and then there's a third crisis, and well, we don't have a world war, we have had um, Wars between the United States and, and uh, Islamic peoples that have gone on for some time and have threatened to escalate into a wider conflict. So it's entirely possible that we are on the verge of a third great war, as predicted by uh, the prophecy. Now I want to kind of veer off in a big way, in a kind of sense. Uh, and go back uh, to some material presented earlier in these discussions. And this material concerns um, that element of, of questions that were related to the fact that uh, natural science thinks that there's all matter and, and no spirit. Now, what happens if we do have uh, spirit? What if spirit is real? And of course that's one of the things we're talking about here. We're going to come at that from a lot of directions. But anyway, in the time of natural science, if spirit was real, one would at least expect someone to be investigating that question. And you will recall earlier in these uh, things I talked about a certain personality by the name of Rudolf Steiner. And I presented some books of his that were very significant books in terms of the history of thought regarding the problem of knowledge or epistemology and, and uh, philosophy. And I describe philosophy as the king of the sciences. And the science of knowledge, you might say, is what he wrote about in the two books that I talked about, A Theory of Knowledge Implicit in Goethe's World Conception, and the other one was a the philosophy of spiritual activity or the philosophy of freedom and of course at the same time he published his dissertation his PhD dissertation in philosophy which he called truth and knowledge sometimes it's called truth and science in any event uh, we'll come up back, back at this a little later but I want to talk about Rudolf Steiner now following these activities in his biography when he at the beginning of the or at the end of the 19th century he made a very significant contribution to philosophy um, and particularly the, the philosophy that underpins natural science. He went on in the, in the uh, early part of the 20th century to become a spiritual teacher, mostly teaching in Central Europe, and he called what he did uh, spiritual science. And he remarked often when he lectured about his research into the spirit that uh, he was uh, <coughs> or, or the foundation of his activity was these books on on knowledge um, uh, there's a lot of issues that one can get into there I'm just going to go at the situation uh, in a certain kind of narrow way uh, by speaking of uh, the idea of research into the spiritual now Steiner described himself as clairvoyant and he talked about that in a number of different ways. He talked about being able to investigate what he called the Akashic Record, which was a kind of memory of the spiritual elements of existence. Uh, he also talked about uh, uh, lots and lots and lots of things. He wrote oh, almost 30 books and gave 6,000 lectures. Um, and he didn't just... Uh, talk about spiritual things in the sense of, you know, teaching enlightenment or things like that. People came to him and they asked him questions and as a result of the questions that were put to him by those who thought he might have something to say, there came into being Waldorf education, there came into being biodynamic agriculture, there came into being 
anthroposophical medicine, and as I talked before about people who had who had certain skills in the West, who, who whose level of skillfulness is at the same level as the Eastern teachers of enlightenment. In the West, uh, the people that do this kind of work don't uh, particularly teach a spiritual path, although Steiner did. Uh, they often do things which redeem uh, or renew uh, certain aspects of human knowledge. And this is a lot of what Steiner did. He spent a lot of time giving lectures on medicine and education and agriculture and natural science and a great deal. Um, and one of the things he did was he did a, a stories of what might be called the true evolution, evolutionary history of, of mankind uh, when you add the spirit into it. And um, he based that on his perceptions of the spirit and he um, also uh, did this with uh, a mind to do it in such a way that, that uh, his work could be replicated. He was very concerned about the language in which spiritual experience was presented in this time. Uh, and uh, it was very helpful to us to understand the carefulness with which he did what he did. You have to read a lot of his work in order, in order to appreciate the carefulness. But in any event, one of the things that he talked about was he talked about um, the particular age in which we live and the kind of things going on it and its relationship to prior ages. And he gave to the age in which we live, though the, the larger grouping of the age, he called it the post-Atlantean uh, age. And he meant by that to suggest that Atlantis was a real thing. Now, why is that important? Well, we'll get into that in the next uh, topic, because, again, I'm required by timeliness to shut down. But uh, there's a de direct relationship between the things he said about Atlantis and the Hopi prophecy.